So yesterday I picked up one of the new Magic the Gathering Deck Builders Toolkit. This is the new release, the 2011. Um, so they've obviously updated this now to include um, more up-to-date boosters and also the semi-random element I believe has been updated. It would be interesting to see actually what is in here. Um, so let's open this up. Uh, in Canada, by the way, this is around about $25. In the States, I think the uh, recommended retail price is $20, and I've seen it online um, for $14, which is exceptional value for money, considering you actually get four boosters in here. Look at the box. Look at the artwork. Let's see what's in here. So you get this nice card storage box. Okay, so this looks like is this pretty much the same setup. I'm going to know more once I start opening these up. Um, you've got your pretty much standard rules guide. There's also a, a thing about the actual deck builders toolkit itself, which goes on to describe different archetypes um, in it. And different suggestions for building. So th this looks like pretty much the same makeup as before. The the in terms of the preformed part of the deck, the bit with the terramorphic expanses in it is the semi-random component. Um, there's four terramorphic expanses in here. Um, and then sort of 10 other cards, uh, sorry, 40 other cards in blocks of 10, and each of those 10 cards are pulled from a particular archetype. So when we open that up, we'll see what that is. The rest of these here, these three here, should be, if it's the same as the previous set, exactly the same, whichever t Deck Builders Toolkit you buy. So we'll open up these first. So what do we have? Uh, Perilous Mert, Strider Harness, Prophetic Prism, Evolving Wilds, another Evolving Wilds, Pilgrim's Eye, Infantry Veteran, Soul's Attendant, Squadron Hawk, another Squadron Hawk, Core Sky Fisher, Core Hook Master, so I can see here we've got Zendikar stuff. Uh, there's an M11 Assault Griffin, Cloud Crusader from M11, Pacifism. Two of those. Solemn Offering. So there's an M11 stuff here. Safe Passage. Inspired Charge, Augie Owl. This is all M11. Scroll Thief, Cloud Elemental. These are Adept. Azure Drake, Plated Sea Strider, Sorokar Banisher, Two Cancels, A Mana Leak, A 4C, Preordain, Ice Cage, Gordra's Vampire, from Zendikar, Bloodseeker, from Zendikar, Viscera Seer, Child of Night, Cadaver Imp, Crypt Ripper, Jaguar Swarm, Doom Blade, Second Doom Blade, 
duress. Quag sickness, sign in blood. Grasp of darkness. That's from Skulls of Mirrodin. Uh, Goblin Tunneler from M11. Fiery Hellhound M11. Full Shock Heart Stoker. That's a red from Skulls of Mirrodin. Heart Runner. Skulls are very shiny. Manic Vandal. Ogre Resistor. Berserkers of Blood Ridge. Here's the Lightning Bolts. Two of those. Um, a Flame Slash. Challenger's Outrage. Act of Treason. Demolish. Land War Elves. Two of those. And a Garrick's Companion. So there's a not, lot of M11 in there, uh, some Scars, some Zendikar, which is interesting, and I think I saw a Meridian Besieged in there as well, one of the, some of the cards, or one of the cards. Um, the reason why it's interesting about the, the sets is that if you're buying this intending to build decks for standard play, then obviously you have to be mindful of when sets rotate out. So the core sets um, and the Zen, anything in Zendikar block will rotate out in October. So there's a bit of time, plenty of time yet, but just bear that in mind. Is if you're playing in standard formats and you're going to be using this for competitions, then you have to be careful of which cards are going to rotate out. Um, saying that, if the card is then present in a new set in standard then the old card is still valid um, in much the same way that that um, well all, all basic lands um, with with a, a few exceptions are always valid regardless of the set um, in standard so let's move on to the second pack um, here uh, this is basically both spells and there's some land in here as well um, so you've got Overgrown Battlement, Rise of Eldrazi, uh, Viridian Emissary, Meridian Besiege that is, Giant Spider, Alpha Tyrannix, Spined Worm, Harrow, Giant Growth, Plummet, Naturalize, Savage Silhouette, Sierra Angel, Condemn, there's a Mind Control, so there's a lot of uncommons here, Chase's Ingenuity, Corrupt, Skin Render, Fireball, Prodigal Pyromancer, Garrick's Pack Leader, Leatherback Bailoff, and then you have the land. Um, so here we have plains with various artwork, islands, swamps, mountains, forests plains again, and so on, island, swamp, mountain, forest, so these are all M11 artwork, this pack I believe is just land stuff. Yeah. So again, plains, island, swamp, mountain, forest, plains, island, swamp, mountain, forest, all the way through. 
So that's all your very useful land, uh, and it's all M11 stuff. Okay, so now this is probably, for me, the most interesting part, because this is the first bit of the the randomness of the deck, although it is semi-random because it pulls from a finite card pool. So, as I said, you have a, um, four terramorphic expanses in here, and each one separates the... Uh, the pool from which it pulls 10 cards. So you've got Wall of Frost, Hedron Crab, Guard, um, Gomazoa, Call to Mind, Two Tome Scours, Jace's Eraser, Sea Beyond, Seagate Oracle, Mnemonic Wall. There. Yeah. The next Terramorphic Expanse, Gatekeeper of Malakir, Feast of Blood, Urge to Feed, Vampire Nighthawk, very good card, Bloodthrown Vampire, Barony Vampire, Pulse Tracker, Ruthless Coalblade, Vampire Lacerator, another Vampire Lacerator, and then on to the next Terramorphic Expanse. Some green cards here. Jogger Tree Speaker. That's a good green card there. Lead the Stampede. Green Weaver Druid. Pen and Blade. Arbor Elf. Wild, Hawk in Wild Heart Invoker. Two of those. Azura's Archers. Copperhorn Scout, Sylvian Ranger, and next Terramorphic Expanse, Signal Pest, Goblin War Driver, Ember Hauler, Mem Knight, Kodutha Ring Leader, two of those, Goblin Arsonist, Goblin Balloon Brigade, Rally the Forces, and a Emrakul's Hatcher. So the, I suppose the disappointing thing about this is that there are a few cards from earlier, well, sets, um, yeah, sets in the earlier blocks. Uh, so you got Rise of Eldrazi stuff. There's even somewhere in here. I think I saw a World Wake. Um, and the other thing is a lot of these cards um, cropped up in last year's Deck Builders Toolkit. I sort of recognise them because I've got one of those. Um, then we get on to the truly random element. So we have two packs from the core set, a Scar of the Mirrodin and a Mirrodin Besieged. So let's have a look and see what we get. Okay. Canyon Minotaur, Skrull Thief, Assassinate. Lanor Elves, Goblin Pika. Ah, Doomblade. I've got another one of those um, we opened earlier. Act of Treason, Golden Glow Moth, Viscera Seer, Wall of Vines. So that's all our commons out of the way. Pyroclasm, Deathmark, Celestial Purge, and our rare is Seer's Ascendant. Got a planes card in there and a zombie token. Just trying to keep these all together so I can hopefully write out some card lists. Okay, so Nightwing Shade, 
4C, Siege Mastodon, Blinding Mage, Brindlebore, Unholy Strength, Blood Craze Goblin, Preordain, Holy Strength, Duress, uh, Uncommons are Condemn, Gargoyle Sentinel, we'll take Key, um, uh, the rare is Vengeful Archon, a Mountain card and an Ooze token. Moving on to Meridian Besieged, we have the Commons, Spin Engine, Nathasaur, Shriek Horn, Quicksilver Geyser, Ardent Recruit, Phoresis, Phyrexian Digester, Scourge Servant, Tangle Hulk, Fuel for the Cause, New Rock Commando, that's the uncommon, another common lead the stampede into the core, Creeping Corrosion is the rare. As a soldier token and a swamp. And finally, Skulls of Meridian. So we have a Fume Spitter, Giant Hawk, Glint Hawk, a Glint Hawk Idol, Alpha Tyrannix, Revoke Existence, Screeching Silcor, Oxida Daredevil, Blister Grub, Salvage Scout, Skin Render, which is the um, uncommon, Acid Web Spider, Palladium Mirror, ah, Horde Smelter Dragon, which is the rare in the deck, Forest, Golem Token, and a nice foil, Neuroc Replicator. Nice and shiny. So, <clears throat> in terms of the sort of value for money, um, just the fact that it's got the um, you know, boosters in them. So in Canada, the boosters are, I think, five dollars each. So, you know, if you had for, bought four of those, that that would be twenty dollars already. So you're getting pretty good value for money. I'm disappointed by the the amount of Zendikar stuff in there. Um, you know, it would have been nice to maybe see a lot more of the the more recent uh, block. Um, because there are a lot of cards in there that seem to be very similar to last year's set a um, couple of things that would be nice to see in it would be um, that's something like a spin down counter I know a lot of people have got those already but um, if you know this is aimed at sort of people beginning um, I do a nice spin down counter in there um, and you know even maybe just throw in some some nice current tokens like some poison tokens something like that um, something that sort of reflects the, the current gameplay would be really good. Um, so I think really, like I said, this, this is primarily aimed at new players to the game. 
Um, I find it useful because it's it's quite good. Um, I, I know several people sort of will buy these toolkits, um, one each, and then just basically do almost like a a super sealed deck build using using the uh, deck builders toolkit. Do like a deck builders toolkit wars. Um, so that's one handy thing to do. The other thing that I recommend doing with this is that. And the way wizards sell it, they, um, you know, almost use it so well. You've gone out, you've bought, say, an intro deck, and then the next thing is to buy a deck builder's toolkit. I would be tempted to do it around the other way. Um, I would actually be tempted to buy a deck builder's toolkit, see what you get in it, and then buy the appropriate intro deck um, based on the sort of cards you pulled in this. Um, because you, you might find that with... with if you bought an intro deck first and then bought this, you m might, if you're unlucky, find that, that the cards don't really reflect the um, the archetype in the intro deck. Um, I mean, this is sufficiently sort of, well, not so much random, but, you know, there's sufficient bre breadth of cards here for that not necessarily to happen. But I think it might be better to get the toolkit first and then, based on what archetypes you get in it, go out and buy you know, other cards.